Hi everyone, happy Memorial Day weekend. Memorial Day marks the unofficial start of summer, which is so exciting. And what could be more quintessential of a vegetable than a tomato? So today I'm gonna to share with you 10 tips so that you can grow lots of terrific tomatoes in your garden this summer. Tip number one is to know the type of tomato that you're growing so you can provide it with the appropriate size for the space that you need. The first type of tomato is called indeterminate. It's a large plant like this one here, it's Golden Jubilee. It can grow to about eight to 10 feet tall. It needs a large space to grow in. And right now I have it in a 20 gallon Smart Pots container, which is a perfect size for an indeterminate tomato. Now indeterminate tomatoes will grow and produce over all the season long and will be killed off by frost. So that way you know exactly what to expect from your indeterminate tomato. On the other hand, determinate tomatoes are much smaller in size. They grow and produce all of their tomatoes at once, and then the plant dies. So you can usually grow a determinate tomato in a smaller container. Here's a dwarf determinant called a Tiny Tim. Five gallon Smart Pots is perfect for that. So when you know your type, you know what size to plant your tomatoes in, what size pot to plant your tomatoes in, or how much space it needs in a raised bed, you can grow lots and lots of terrific tomatoes. Tip number two is to fertilize your tomato plants consistently throughout the season. You really got to stick to a routine because just like our bodies, our plants get depleted and need some food to keep on producing. So what I like to do is give my plants at planting time fertilizers that are higher in nitrogen to produce lots of green leafy growth. So I put a handful or so of organic granular fertilizer, which is higher in nitrogen and I give them a handful of worm castings to keep them happy and healthy. These are all slow release fertilizers that will feed my plants over a couple of months. And then I always give them a nice handful of fresh compost, putting this right into the planting hole before I put my tomato in. And I like to stick with a monthly fertilizing routine for my tomato plants. So once the plant starts flowering and fruiting, I'll back off on the nitrogen give them a lower nitrogen fertilizer, such as sprinkle around some compost around the plant, or give them another little handful of worm castings. And you'll find my entire summer vegetable garden fertilizing routine in my new book, The First Time Gardener Raised Bed Garden. Head over to calicumgardeninhome.com and pick one up so you have it all written down for you. So I've got my slow release fertilizers in the planting hole. We're gonna give my tomato plant a dose of some quick release fertilizers when we plant it. Tip number four is to plant your tomato plants deep into your planting hole. And the reason why this is so important for terrific tomatoes because tomato stems are special. They have little teeny tiny hairs on the stem. And wherever those hairs touch the stem, it's gonna send out roots. It's gonna make for a sturdy, happy, healthy tomato plant with lots and lots of roots. When you have a lot of roots, you're gonna have a lot of tomatoes. So we're actually gonna plant one of these tomatoes. This is Aunt Ruby's German Green Tomato, one of my very favorites. It's from my tomato seed collection. And you can grab all your seed collections, Smart Pots containers, and my book for a uh, sale this weekend, 25% off, special for Memorial Day with the code TOMATO over at calicumgardenhome.com. And with every order, you're gonna get a Bring on the Pollinators red flower seed collection, which has five different varieties of red flowers to help us all celebrate Memorial Day. So I am just pulling out one of these tomatoes. There's three actually in this little pot. These are the ones that started from seed a couple of months back. And we're gonna get it as deep into the planting hole as we can. It has really nice roots. It's gonna develop even more nice roots here. Digging way down in here. And this will encourage the tomato to be nice and sturdy, grow lots of roots along the stem. It's gonna be a happy and healthy plant with lots of terrific tomatoes. Now that our tomato plant is in the ground, we can go back to tip number two and talk about that quick release fertilizer that really gets them off to a good start. I use a higher nitrogen fertilizer at planting time. This is fish fertilizer. You can get this at just about any garden center. It has a much higher nitrogen than it does phosphorus and potassium, which is gonna encourage lots of great green leafy growth. The Vermistera vitality has a natural growth hormone that really helps the plants be happy and healthy and helps, you produce, helps them produce lots of tomatoes. So I'm gonna water in my plant nice and deep so it gets down to the roots where the plant needs it the most. Tip five, provide your tomatoes with some support. Now tomatoes are a vining vegetable. When you give them a nice, strong, sturdy tomato cage to grow up, they're gonna be up off the ground. It's gonna provide a lot better airflow under the plant 
Now keep them away from the pests and critters. Your plant's gonna be happier and healthier. You're gonna grow a lot more tomatoes. Now we may need to put a little stake in here to support the tomato plant just until it gets big enough to be supported by the tomato cage. And this is an indeterminate tomato. So remember, it grows eight to 10 feet tall. So you need a quite a large cage for an indeterminate tomato. This is a Titan cage by Gardeners. I'm gonna also show you some of the really inexpensive DIY cages that you can make as well. So I wanted to bring you down here to the raised bed kitchen garden. A lot of you planted this with me and built it with me on the raised bed garden series. But this is a DIY super sturdy tomato cage. Very inexpensive. It's great for indeterminate tomatoes. This is again a Golden Jubilee, one of my favorites, because it's made out of two pieces of concrete remesh. And go back and watch the video on how we did this for all the details. It's also in my book, but it's plenty large enough to hold an eight to 10 foot tomato loaded down with lots of terrific tomatoes with a really good support. Now for your determinate tomatoes, remember they grow to a set size. You don't need such a big support. This is an Ace 55 tomato from my tomato seed collection. Here I have it on a little tomato tower. It's maybe about four feet high. It's gonna be just right for the Ace 55. And over here, we have another beautiful tiny Tim growing in the little shorty smart pots. And for this one, because it's such a short determinate plant, it really is perfectly sufficient with a small tomato cage that you can pick up at the garden center. It gives it just the right amount of support. Tip six is to water your tomatoes deeply. Now I'm gonna grab my hose link retractable hose and give my tomato plants down here a nice deep drink. And the reason why you wanna water your tomato plants deeply is because it encourages the roots to grow down nice and deep. When, they ha when you have nice deep roots, they're gonna be nice, healthy, strong plants, be able to pull up a lot of nutrients from the soil and be able to grow some terrific tomatoes. So you wanna water, let it soak in, then water again. So the water sinks all the way down to the roots. Tip number seven for terrific tomatoes is to hand pollinate your tomatoes. Now tomato flowers are unique because they're self-pollinating. They have both male and female parts in the same flower. So all you need to do to self-pollinate, it's super easy, or to hand pollinate, is to shake your tomato plants a couple of times a day. It'll move the pollen around and produce a lot more terrific tomatoes for you. Now this is a Golden Jubilee tomato and it already has a beautiful tomato here on the plant. Not quite ripe yet, but by shaking the plant, this tomato will produce lots more tomatoes throughout the growing season. Tip number eight is to prune your indeterminate tomato plants. Now here we have another Golden Jubilee, again, my favorite. I have tons of them here in the garden, growing in a 10 gallon Calicum Smart Pots. It's the perfect size for an indeterminate plant. And by pruning the bottom six to 12 inches of the plant, not only do you keep the plant a lot healthier, you give it more airflow down under here, and it just keeps the soil from, the water from splashing up on the soil onto the plant, which can cause diseases. And you also wanna make sure that you prune any yellowing leaves because that's a sign of disease. So I'm just gonna get in here and prune off a couple of the bottom leaves to help give plenty of airflow to this tomato plant. Here we have a leaf that's kind of yellow here. You always want to prune off any yellowing leaves to help control the disease on the plants. And as the plant grows, right now I have about six inches pruned, but as the plant grows, I'll continue to prune the bottom leaves so the plant stays happy and healthy and helps produce a lot of tomatoes. Now a determinate tomato, however, doesn't need pruning like an indeterminate tomato does. The only thing you want to do is just snip the leaves that are touching the soil Again, just to help keep the water from splashing up on the plant and to keep the plant healthier. And you would wanna trim any spotted or yellowing leaves like this one here, just to keep any disease from spreading to the rest of the plant. Tip number nine is all about pest control. Now we don't have a ton of tomato pests here in California, 
but we do get spider mites like crazy. So the key is know when the pests come into your garden based on previous years or ask around to your neighbors and then start spraying preventively about two weeks before that. Now I like to spray neem oil for pest control. It's a great organic method. It has as a directant in it which really helps disrupt the life cycle of the chewing and sucking insects. Do make sure you get cold pressed with azadiractin and I'll put a link to where I get my neem oil. But basically what you want to do is spray your plant in the evening or in the morning when the bee activity isn't as heavy. You want to spray the tops of the leaves, the bottom of the leaves. And the neem oil really helps disrupt the life cycle of the chewing and sucking insects. I just have one tablespoon of neem oil in this pump sprayer. Add a little bit of a natural soap in there so the neem oil sticks to the plants and you always want to do a test spray first and then wait about 48 hours to make sure that your plant still looks good. If there's any damage to the leaves you want to adjust the amount of the neem oil and I have a full-on video on organic pest control that you can watch for lots of more details. And you do always want to make sure that you don't spray in direct sunlight evening or morning so that you don't burn your plants. Tip number 10 is to use shave cloth during a heat wave. Now, when the temperatures get over 90 degrees, the tomato plants, most plants in your garden, just get stressed out. The flowers start drying up and dropping off, and you kind of have to start all over. For, so if you want a lot of terrific tomatoes, use a shave cloth to block out the intensity of the sun's rays. So this is kind of see-through. I believe this one's about a 50% block. It still allows some of the sunlight to get through, but it will definitely help keep your tomato plants cooler. And actually, we've done a little test with our thermometer. It actually keeps it about 10 degrees cooler under the shade cloth, which will really, really help a lot. <laughs> Got my little clips on my belt here. So just wrap some shade cloth around your tower or throw it over your cage, and you are good to go in the heat. Your plants won't be stressed out. You'll be able to grow a lot more tomatoes. Now, I don't know if I counted my tomato tips wrong or not, but I do have one more tip for you. So we'll count that as a bonus tip, and that's all about harvesting. Now, I really wish I had one ready to harvest to show you, but tomatoes are terrific when they ripen on the vine. So how you tell if they're ripe, this one is obviously way too small, um, but how you tell if they're ripe is if they have a little bit of a give when you squeeze it. So this one will size up and soften up and be ready for picking. We'll definitely bring you along for that. But if you've got pests and critters that are chowing down on your tomatoes, you can harvest them early at first blush when the tomato first starts to turn color. Just take them inside, put them in a paper bag, and the ethylene gas will release in the paper bag and help ripen up the tomato. Or you can just let it sit right on the countertop. But don't put it in a sunny windowsill because that will cause the tomato to spoil a lot easier. I want to invite you to grow tomatoes along with me this summer. So much fun to grow your own fresh, tasty, delicious tomatoes. Grab a tomato seed collection over at CaliCimGardenAndHome.com and also grab a copy of my book, The First Time Gardener, Raised Bed Gardening for all the know-how that you need to grow your raised bed garden. And this weekend until May 31st, you're gonna get 25% off with the code TOMATO site-wide and you'll also receive a free Bring on the Pollinators Red Season Collection to celebrate Memorial Day with every purchase. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next video.